In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the changes that I've made to my remote controlled tank, as well as a basic overview of how the programming in the tank works. Since the last video that I've made, I've moved all of the components into the new frame. I've also added a third 18650 battery to get around 12 volts at the output. I used two hobby servo motors to make a turret for the top of the tank. Right now I just have a Wi-Fi camera strapped to it so that I can get a first person view. I ended up damaging one of the gearboxes since they are only rated up to 6 volts. That's why the tank makes such a horrible noise when it drives around. I ordered some better motors with all metal gearboxes so hopefully that won't happen again. Here's a quick look at the updated schematic. The only real change is the addition of two servo motors for the turret. The servos on top are positioned so that one of them allows for 180 degrees of horizontal rotation, while the other allows for 180 degrees of vertical rotation. I have it set so that the servo motors will reset to a default position whenever you turn the power on. The tank is still controlled using the HC06 module and the Android app Bluetooth Electronics. I'm planning on upgrading the tank to use a Node MCU board in the future since they utilize the ESP8266 module for built-in Wi-Fi and they have greater overall functionality. The program for the tank is fairly straightforward. I'm going to try my best to explain the basics of how it works. I'm using version 1.6.7 of the Arduino IDE for this. To start off, I import the software serial library and the servo library. I use software serial so that I can utilize different pins for RX and TX communication. The servo library is needed for, well, the servos. Then I create two servo objects for the turret. I name them AMXY and AMZ respectively. Next, I set variables. I assign four different variables to the pins associated with the L298N, and I name them accordingly. I assign two variables to handle the position of the servo motors, and then I create a character named BT data that will handle any incoming Bluetooth data. I created BT data as a character variable type since I'm only going to be sending single characters to it. Finally, I use the software serial library to set pins 6 and 7 as the RX and TX pins for the HC06 module. On to the setup. To start off, I set up serial communication at a baud rate of 9600 with the name HC06, and then I print a line to the serial monitor. I use these two lines as a self-check when I was initially programming the tank just to make sure that it's working. Then, I set the four pins that are associated with the L298N as outputs. To finish the setup, I attach the two servo objects to the analog pins associated with the servos. Then, I write a position to them so that they'll move to a default position when the tank is turned on and it finishes setup. A delay of 250 milliseconds is used to give the motor some time to reach their position. On to the loop. This is the longest part of the program, but it's also quite simple in nature. There are basically two if statements inside of this loop. The first if statement checks to see that there is data available from the HC06. If there isn't any data available, it simply keeps looping until there is. Once there is data, it stores it inside of the character BT data and it moves on to the next if statement. These check to see if the data that we stored is a value that we actually want. If the value is something we want, for example a zero, then it will enter the following if statement corresponding to that value. In this case, if I receive a zero, it sets all of the motor outputs to low so that the tank will come to a stop. Receiving a 1 will cause the tank to drive forwards, a 2 will cause it to drive in reverse, and so on. The servo motors are also controlled using if statements. These statements check to see if the motors are within a certain position range. If they are within that range, then it will increment or decrement the position value by 5, which corresponds to a position change of 5 degrees in the motor. And that's pretty much all there is to the program that's running on the tank. The final step to control the tank is to use the Android application Bluetooth Electronics to create a user interface that I can control the tank with. I really like using this application because it makes it very simple to connect to and control Bluetooth modules. The first step in using the application is to download it onto your phone and then pair your device with the HC06 module. To pair your device, 
power on the HC06 until the light starts blinking, which indicates that it's available for pairing. Search for the Bluetooth module in your device's Bluetooth settings, and then connect to it using the default password of 1234 if it asks you. Then, open the Bluetooth Electronics app. Inside of Bluetooth Electronics, click Connect at the top right of the screen and then connect to the HC06 module. You have to pair your device normally through Bluetooth before you can actually pair it inside of the app. Once connected, hit Done, then select an empty panel and hit Edit. I'm using two D-pads to control the tank. One D-pad controls the drive motors and the other D-pad controls the servo motors on top. Since I use the characters 1 through 4 in order to drive the tank, I'm going to assign those values to the first D-pad. I use a release string of 0 because that's the character that I use to stop the tank. For the servo motors, I use 5 through 8 to control their positions. Instead of this D-pad sending a single character on press and release, I have it repeatedly send the string when one of the buttons is pushed. Once all of that is done, I can run that program and now I'm able to control the tank wirelessly using the Bluetooth Electronics application. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I put a fair amount of work into it, so I hope that you learned something new, or at least hope that you enjoyed watching. Thanks again. See you next time.